Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to talk about the definition and some theorems about Taylor series. And then we will also do some examples where we will determine the Taylor series and the radius of convergence for each function here below. So let's get going. The definition states that if a function is analytic at some point c0, then the following series, which includes all the derivatives of a function of order 0 to infinity, is called the Taylor series for a function around the point c0. And the next theorem is really important, and it states that if a function is analytic on some disk, which simply includes all the c values inside the circle centered at c0 with radius r, then we know that the function will be equal to its Taylor series for all c values on this disk. And from the fact that the function needs to be analytic on this disk, we can draw the conclusion that the radius of convergence, r, of a power series is defined as the distance from c0 to the closest singularity of the function. And the last thing I want to touch on is that power series are really solid things in mathematics. You can use whatever mathematical operator you would like on them, and they will still be valid inside the radius of convergence. In the following examples, I would like us to determine the Taylor series and the radius of convergence for each function here below. So let's start with the first example. And when doing these kinds of problems, I recommend you to start by drawing a graph and mark the important points on it. And the important points are always going to be the center of the circle, C0, which in this case is going to be zero, and the singularities of a function, which in this case is going to be minus 2, since this makes the function divide with 0. And now we can observe that the radius of convergence for a power series is going to be equal to 2. Let's continue by determining the expression for the Taylor series. And since we are expanding around the point c is equal to 0, we know that the Taylor series must have this form here. And even though we can determine the coefficients in this formula, with the help of the function's derivatives, we don't really do it, because that would take a lot of time. The way we do it in complex analysis is that we use known geometric series and manipulate them so that they look like our Taylor series. And the geometric series that is most frequently used is the following, which is only convergent if the absolute value of w is smaller than 1. And the reason we use this geometric series is because if we insert c minus the point of expansion times a random factor as our w, we get something that looks pretty much exactly the same as our Taylor series around the same point. And to apply it to our function here, first we need to create a 1 in the denominator, and we can do that by factoring out 1 divided by 2. And since we would like our end result to be in power of c's, we want our second term here, which is going to be equal to w in the formula, to be c times some factor. And that is exactly what we have managed to do here. And note that we have rewritten 1 plus c divided by 2 as 1 minus minus c divided by 2, as we have a minus sign in the formula up here. And now we can use our geometric series, with w is equal to minus c divided by 2. And if we just factor out a minus 1 from a numerator and a 2 from a denominator, we get the following. And this series is convergent if the absolute value of c divided by 2 is smaller than 1. But that is the same thing as saying that the absolute value of c should be smaller than 2, which we kind of already knew from our image. In the next example, we have moved our point of expansion to 1 instead of 0, but it's the same function. And now we can see that the radius of convergence must be equal to 3, since this is the new distance from the point of expansion to the closest singularity, which is still the number minus 2. And since we are in this case expanding around the point 1, we would like our w to be equal to c minus 1 times some factor. So if we add and subtract 1 in the denominator, we get the following. 
And if we now factor out 1 divided by 3, we can once again use our geometric series to rewrite the whole thing as the following. And this Taylor series is convergent if the absolute value of minus c minus 1 divided by 3 is less than 1. And that is the same as saying that the absolute value of c minus 1 is less than 3. So the distance from c to 1 should not be bigger than 3. And that is exactly our disk we have here. In the third example, we can see that the radius of convergence will be the same as in the second example, since we are expanding around the same point, and the function has a singularity at minus 2. But it is much harder to try to determine the expression for the Taylor series if we are using the same method as in the last two examples, and that is because we cannot easily rewrite it on the form of a geometric series. But we can instead solve it by using the fact that this function here is the derivative of a function f here above. But we got two Taylor series for this function, right? And the one we are going to use is the one that is valid inside the same region. And therefore we have to use this Taylor series. So if we differentiate the Taylor series for the function f here above, we get the following. And if you remember the first term in the Taylor series, will always be a constant, right? Which we can see traces of in the expression here, since if you plug in n is equal to zero, you will simply get a zero back. And that comes from the fact that we have taken the derivative of a constant. So instead of starting this from n is equal to zero and getting a zero as the first term, we can start it from n is equal to one instead, and it will have the same value. In our last example, we're going to talk about what you can do if you're not able to rewrite your function on the form of a geometric series, or if you're simply not able to make a connection to another function with a known power series, like we did in the last example. So this function here has two singularities, one at minus two and one at minus three. And therefore the radius of convergence is going to be two, since that is the closest singularity. And to solve this problem, we have to rewrite it with the help of a Parton fraction expansion. And now we can determine the Taylor series for each of these terms here. And then we can add them together to get the final answer. Let's start with the term 5 divided by c plus 3. And we would like to once again use our geometric series, right? And this time we would like the end result to be in power of c's since you are expanding around the point zero. And therefore we can start by factoring out phi divided by three. And then we can simply rewrite one plus c divided by three as one minus minus c divided by three in the denominator. And by now applying this as a geometric series, we get the following. And this will be valid if the absolute value of c is less than 3. And now we can do the same for the next term. We can start by factoring out 4 divided by 2. And if we now rewrite 1 plus c divided by 2 to 1 minus minus c divided by 2 in the denominator and apply the geometric series, we get the following. And this will be valid if the absolute value of c is less than 2. So if we now take the first tail series and subtract it with the second one, we get the following. But in what region will this be valid? I mean the first series is valid if the absolute value of c is less than 3. But the second one is only valid if the absolute value of c is less than 2. And therefore the end result will be the smaller of the two regions, since in this region both of the power series will be valid. And this simply corresponds to our earlier findings, when we made the plot. Thanks for watching.